Well, hi everyone, this is Nojo from Thranda Design, taking another look at the Pilatus PC6 Turbo Porter. This time, we're doing a short IFR flight, instrument flight, from Renton, Washington, just over the water to Bremerton, Washington. This is going to give us a chance to take a closer look at the Aspen EFD1000 uh, avionics package, as well as some of the other instruments in avionics and how those all work together to do an instrument flight. I'll, um, I'll include some links in the description to the uh, approach procedures, but basically we're doing the Bellevue 4 departure out of Renton, and then we'll be doing the ILS runway 20 approach into Bremerton. So here we are sitting outside, uh, out front of ProFlight Aviation at the Renton airport. Let's hop inside the cockpit here. So you can see we're on panel preset two, or actually the second panel preset, which is preset one. So we have the Aspen EFD-1000 here, we also have a pair of Garmin units. We also have the autopilot, uh, which is great because I'm lazy and I want the plane to fly itself. So uh, first things first, let's check the general page. We're just gonna make sure engine mode on realistic and steering on realistic. And then for the weight and balance, uh, I'm just gonna left click and fill the fuel and we'll have two of us up in the front seats. We can see this gives us kind of a nice uh, middle, middle weight with a bit of a forward CG, but that's okay and uh, panels all set up. All right, so, and we can see the, uh, this is our liters per hour fuel flow, and this is also liters used, and you can see when we added fuel, it kind of looped back around, so we can reset that to zero by pressing on this button here, and now we're back to zero liters burned. So, we're gonna get set up for the Bellevue 4 departure, which is really simple. It's just fly heading 350, maintain 3000 feet. So let's set that up in the Aspen here. So we can see on this uh, right knob, we've got heading. And if we click, it highlights heading. If we click again, highlights the altitude. Again, Barrow for the altimeter setting, which 3007. Um, and then finally, the minimums, 1000. So let's go through. Oh, and if we click again, it comes back out. So we'll set those up real quick. So heading 350, I can uh, just left click or use the mouse scroll wheel. We're gonna set 350. Click again for altitude, I'm gonna set that to 3000, right there. And the barometric setting for the weather today is 3007, so that's good. We can change that here with the knob and we'll notice it also changes this altimeter, or we can use this knob here, whichever one's easier. Then we'll click again the minimums. Uh, minimums on our approach are gonna be 642, and we'll set that once we brief the approach. Uh, and then finally the course over here, same deal on the left knob. We click once for course, we can set that. And we're gonna set that to the runway heading for ourselves for now, just because our heading bug is set to actually our departure heading, which is a little bit different. So this just helps with situational awareness. And then another click would give us a indicated airspeed bug uh, and then back out. So now let's set up real quick our GPSs. Uh, we're set to direct Renton, but we want Bremerton, which is right over here. So we're just gonna go direct and use the big knob to highlight this part. Scroll the little knob to select letter, big knob to the next space, and we're putting in Bremerton, which is Kilo Papa Whiskey Tango. So we'll just do that. I have to remember my alphabet. There it is, KPWT. Enter, activate, enter. So now we have direct to Bremerton. And since we know what approach we're gonna do, we're gonna do the ILS 20. So we'll click approach, select approach is already highlighted, enter, ILS 20, enter. We'll do it from vectors, enter. And we're just gonna load it for now, enter. So if we go to the flight plan, we can see CFFWM and then WUMOX, our final approach fix, runway 20, and then the missed approach and the hold at the end of that. Uh, and we see we have the magenta line. So basically our plan is we're gonna take off to the north, uh, we'll go out here to the west, and then we'll intercept and fly in on the ILS. Now. Today the weather's out of the south, we're gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna take uh, the Alpha 3 intersection here and we're gonna take off to the north just on the last several hundred feet of the runway. It's a little bit cheating, but it's fine. We're not gonna use uh, air traffic control today either, so we're just gonna be uh, kind of making it up as we go. Just a quick demo flight. So uh, frequencies we're not gonna use, but I've got Seattle Approach set and um, the Bremerton CTAF, Common Traffic Advisory Frequency. And then Bremerton's weather here, 121.2. So, let's go through our before takeoff checklist real quick. Flight controls, making sure they're free and correct. So they're free, and we would look out at the wing and tail, make sure they're all moving the correct direction. Uh, altimeter is set, 3007. 
so his check should be about 20 feet. Fuel quantity, we're full, so that's good. Booster pump on, he, uh, pedo heat on. Normally I leave that till the end of the runway, but we'll do it now. Prop D ice, we don't need it today because it's warm, but we could turn it on here if we need, and here's the ammeter for it. FCU sense line heater. Uh, there's more info in the manual, but basically if it's cold, we turn it on, but it's a warm day, so we're gonna leave it off. Strobe lights on, we'll set those to strobe. Oil temp, make sure it's in the green arc. Instruments, checked, good, good, set, set, that's good, that shows zero, that's reading and starting to count up, that's good, no flag. Uh, those are fine for now, and those, uh, airspeed. Um, all right, uh, doors and windows closed. We're just gonna verify those are closed, that's closed, and the back doors are closed, good. Uh, tail wheel we will lock when we're on the runway. Uh, right now it's unlocked, and rudder pedals will make sure they're free. We'll confirm that the tail wheel is locked, and then condition lever high idle, and then we'll take off. And uh, more details in the takeoff video. Um, so for now, we're just going to kind of skip ahead. All right, here we are at the hold short line. So we're just going to, uh, there's more details in the takeoff video. Whoops. Lights down, lights on, pedo heat on. So uh, the takeoff tutorial video will have more detail, but I'm just going to kind of roll through this right now. Oh yeah, we need to set up our trim and flaps. Okay, in previous videos I was on low idle for the condition lever, but for this flight we're going to have it on high idle, because we're not going to be doing any in-flight beta, hopefully. So we're going to get ourselves nice and lined up here on the runway. <laughs> we see there's not a whole lot of runway, but that's okay, the PC-6 is more than capable. Lined up, we're going to lock the tail wheel and verify tail wheel is locked. And here we go. Takeoff power. Feed that in, holding a bit of right rudder. Power is set. Tail comes up. A little bit of back pressure. And off we go. So we're going to fly our initial, uh, initial climb at 70 knots. And once we're 500 feet, we can retract the flaps and accelerate to 90. And that'll also be the time for us to start our departure procedure. So if I zoom in here a little bit, we can see it's going to be just a slight turn to the right. Okay, so we're coming up on 500 feet. We'll call that close enough. I'm going to let the nose come down just a little bit so we can start accelerating. And I'm going to turn to our heading of 350. There it is. A little bit of turbulence out here, but not bad. And once I get the plane stabilized uh, in a climb at 90, double checking, power is still set. Okay, that's about right. Let's engage the autopilot. So our heading's already set, so we're just going to click Heading. Altitude's already set, so we're going to go to Vertical Speed Mode. And we're at 1,100 feet per minute. I'm going to set that about 1,400 feet per minute or so, because we're pretty light today. And so we'll control our airspeed with that uh, vertical speed. So here we are in the clouds. All right. So we can go through our uh, departure check, or climb check. So flaps are retracted, booster pump switch off, and we're going to verify pressure stays good, fuel pressure, good. Oil cooler, our oil temperature is actually just fine. We don't need to set it to warmer, so we're going to leave that in. Uh, and finally, landing lights can come off and retract them. And then uh, double checking our ITT is below 695, so yeah, we're nice and cool on the ITT. All right, we're just coming up here on 3,000 feet, so the autopilot's leveling the plane off. There it goes. Comes our climb rate down. Oh, hey, we're almost out of clouds. Cool. Uh, so as we level off, we're going to let the plane accelerate, and we'll bring our power back to about 30 PSI. And as we do that, we see uh, we'll need to readjust that rudder trim because we've got a whole bunch of trim in there for takeoff. So we'll set that. So now, since we're going to be going out north, uh, let's say that we got our uh, our turn to the left. So maybe that uh, that clearance might be turn left heading 270. So we'll click for heading, and then either click and hold or run the mouse wheel to set 270, and we see the plane, the autopilot, just turns us uh, automatically. So this is a great time to brief the approach. So if you're following along, you can follow along with the ILS-20. If not, then I'll just kind of brief it for us, but the frequencies, the weather, 121.2, is set in here, and we'll check that in a moment. Seattle Approach Control is going to be 127.1, which we're already on. 
And then finally, Bremerton's common traffic advisory frequency, 123.05, so we have that standby. Uh, checking the notes, none of them are relevant for us today. So now we'll be looking at how are we going to be getting into this uh, uh, approach. So the frequency 111.1 is the localizer for Bremerton, which we actually already have set up here uh, in Nav 1, and it's going to be 197 degrees. So I'm going to roll this course over to 197, verifying we are in Nav 1 and VLOC. And then looking at altitudes, we're at 3,000 now, we'll expect 2,500 for glide slope intercept at Wumox, and then we'll be coming down to 642. So let's go ahead and put that in for our minimum. So click, 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 there's the minimum. And we can just roll this knob and we'll come down to, we'll round up, so 650. And then finally our missed approach. It's gonna be uh, 4,000 on a heading of 197, so basically straight ahead to 4,000. And then the Olympia Vortac, radial 346 uh, to Caro and hold. So the Olympia Vortac is 113.4, so I have it standby in number one and active in number two. And we can see on the RMI, ADF, VOR, this is the Olympia Vortac. So we can use that for the initial navigation on the missed approach. So let's say we got uh, the clearance to send and maintain 2,500. So we're gonna click heading altitude and roll that down to 2,500. We can come over here to the autopilot and go to vertical speed mode and just roll that down to about 700 feet per minute down or so. And we see the autopilot starts a descent. Uh, now we can leave the power up here at cruise. We'll just pick up some speed. Uh, it gets us kind of close to the yellow arc. So if it's bumpy, we might not want to, uh, but otherwise I'll just decrease it a little. And what works pretty well in this plane is ballpark. 40 PSI is about takeoff, 30 for cruise, 20 to 30 for descent, and then about 10 for the approach. So that's just kind of an easy way to uh, to deal with that. So now we'll just continue straight ahead here until we get, you can see over here, until we get closer to the uh, final approach course. And at this point, let's pretend we're cleared for the approach. So we could go procedure and we could go activate approach. Or alternately, the other fun way to do that is flight plan, highlight Wumox, direct, enter. And so now, oops, procedure. Uh, so now we, the GPS is getting us direct to Wumox and it will auto sequence as we step through. All right, here we are coming up on the final approach course. We're almost lined up with it here. So we can expect we'd uh, probably get a vector about heading 240. So we'll set that, press for heading, and roll that over to 240. So at this point, we're starting to think ahead about our approach and the before landing checklist. So we're gonna do that once we're lined up on the localizer. So here we're on a good intercept for it. And we're, we can see on the GPS actually, this is a pretty cool feature, 1.1 miles. Uh, the course is 1.0 miles off to our right right now. So we're getting really close. So now localizer's just almost coming alive. We have also the localizer here uh, down on the bottom side of the attitude indicator and then our glide slope along the right. So we're watching for both of those right now. Uh, there we go, localizer's alive. So let's say we're cleared for the approach. We can arm approach mode on the autopilot, which is right here. And we can see it also arms the glide slope, although the glide slope is not active yet. So the autopilot is turning us to intercept that course, and we're still flying straight at 2,500. So we're gonna kind of run into the bottom of the glide slope here in a moment. Uh, we're four and a half miles away. So good, we have just a moment before we have to do anything. We can see as we turned, we sort of left the heading bug behind. So we could click for heading and we could manually roll it or because pilots are lazy, press and hold on the button and it'll automatically sync it to you. So that's an easy way to set that heading uh, to match. So now we're uh, coming up on three miles from our final approach fix. So we're gonna run through the before landing checklist. So altimeter set, 3007, that's also set, the equivalent, 1018. Um, fuel quantity, check sufficient, yes, we have plenty of fuel still. Boost pump on, and condition lever high idle as needed. So again, we're just gonna leave it in high idle for this flight. And then flaps, um, we're gonna leave them retracted uh, for this approach. We're gonna fly the approach at 90. And once we have the runway in sight, then we can extend the flaps and we'll slow down. 
So we're just going to do the approach with no flaps. And trims we will be re-trimming as required. We can expect to have to take out a little bit more rudder trim as we decrease power. And landing lights, down and on. So this extends them again, which if we look out to the wing, we can probably see that. Yeah, there's the landing light sticking down right there. And then finally, we're going to verify that the tail wheel is locked, which it is in the forward position. And now we see glide slopes coming alive. So we're just going to pull the power back, uh, start slowing the plane down. So for the approach, we can expect to need around 10 to 12 PSI. So I'm going to set it down there, slow ourselves down to about 90 here. And uh, glide slope is armed, so we sh uh, the autopilot should automatically start uh, the descent. Alright, the autopilot should be grabbing that uh, glide slope any moment now, and I'm just going to re-sync the heading. There it is. Alright, there goes the autopilot. So, now we're going to set about 12 PSI. We're starting down. Just double checking, we'll be coming down to 642. We have that set in our minimum, 650. Um, oh, and for our missed approach, 4,000 feet. So now that our autopilot is no longer on altitude hold, we're free to change the altitude. So we're going to click twice and set the altitude up to 4,000 for the missed approach. All right, as we're getting closer here, uh, Bremerton's weather was reporting 700 overcast. Uh, so the airport elevation is about 450. So we're expecting around, around 1,200 we should break out. So that should be any time now, hopefully. And we still have another 600 something feet to go uh, until our missed approach point. Oh, hey, there we go. We can see. And we see, uh, hey, approach lights in sight, so we can come down to 544. And then also we have the runway in sight, so we can continue all the way. So we're going to leave the autopilot on for just a moment. And we're just about 500 feet, so we're going to disconnect the autopilot using the autopilot disconnect button on my joystick. And we're going to hand fly it in from here. So really, we should still be following the glide slope, but at this point we can transition to a visual approach, so we can use the, the, the PAPI, the precision approach path indicators that are there on the left side of the runway. And we can start slowing down. So I'm going to decrease that torque. I'm not going to bring it all the way back, but just enough so that we're comfortably in the white arc. We're going to go to takeoff flaps. And it's a long runway. We're not going to use landing flaps. We'll just, just land with this first notch of flaps here. So. A little bit of nose up trim, only a little bit of rain on the windscreen, that's nice. And looking at about 65, double checking our gear is down, just out of habit. <laughs> In this plane it's always down, or it better be. And there we go, just nice gentle easing the power back, whoops, there's the runway. So we're back into beta, go into reverse, I'm going to reconnect the tail wheel give it a little jiggle, make sure it's working. And we can pull it out of reverse. Oh, there, that warning is our trim warning, so I'm just going to roll that nose down trim again. That's just warning us to not take off with too much uh, nose up trim. And there we go. We've exited the runway, call approach back and tell them we've landed with close, uh, cancel IFR. And uh, so there you go. That's a quick look at an instrument flight in the Thranda Pilatus PC-6. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you later.